we'll be going over two self-defense tools that you can take with you anywhere. These are, I call them hidden self-defense tools because it's not obvious that they're used for self-defense. One is a self-defense cane or just a regular walking cane. The other one is a very strong, almost undestructible or indestructible self-defense umbrella. It doesn't even have to be a self-defense umbrella. It's just a regular umbrella. But I hit this thing against a lot of surfaces and I haven't broken it yet. So it's almost indestructible. I'm sure at some point it'll break, but for self-defense, it's perfect. I want to show you some basic techniques. I'm going to start with this cane. Now this cane is a Cane Master self-defense cane. And the nice thing about a self-defense cane made by Cane Masters is it has this wider crook. You can do a lot of things with that. You can grab with that. You can reach out and you can rake across the face or rake across the body with that beveled edge there. But it also is, allows for a stronger, sturdier grip for your wrist. If you use a cane for mobility, this allows you to go many more places with it. And it's still hidden, it's a self-defense tool. This can go with you into the airport and go through TSA. I've seen it go through TSA, take it on the plane, people get off wherever they go. And you tell me all the time that you're able to take these with you wherever you go. So let's talk first. I'm gonna show you some similar techniques with both your self-defense cane and the other self-defense tool, which is gonna be your umbrella, the full-size umbrella. The first thing is, I'm gonna lower the camera. This is all temporary until we get the new training school set up. So from here, you're carrying it, in this case, with the crook facing out. And this is gonna be a simple technique, similar to an Irish shillelagh or an Irish fighting stick. And you bend the knees and your hand slides down the back. And as you come up, your other hand is up in front of you and you're striking first with this hard part of the crook. This is almost like a big fist or a big knuckle coming into the face. So from this position, sliding down, bending your knees allows you to pop back up, bring that energy through the legs, and as you come forward with a simple thrusting motion, turning through your shoulders and hips, bring that straight into his face for self-defense. From this position, you bring your back hand, the hand that's holding your cane up to your ear, and that puts it into the front hand. From here, you're going to thrust using two hands, which is a very strong strike. From this position, as you're thrusting, you're gonna bring the back side forward. And again, the nice feature of the self-defense cane, which is the first link below, is that can chop into the flesh and create a lot of damage for self-defense. So it's very simple, you're carrying it in the hand that you would be uh, walking with, whether you use it for mobility, maybe if you can't lift it up, maybe you carry two, you lean on one, and then you use the other one for self-defense and you just use it with one hand, it's still very effective. But from this position, loading up the springs, the legs, exploding with that first thrusting strike, turning through your shoulders and hips, staying in the center line of the body, thinking about what you can remove or destroy, his ability to see, breathe temporarily, permanently in through the throat, maybe into the solar plexus, maybe if you're lower into the groin, but coming forward, bringing this up, and as you bring that up, you're going to strike with that tip into his face, bringing your hand to your ear like you're answering your phone, getting it into the front hand. Now you have a two-handed strike, almost like a bayonet or a rifle, a rifle butt strike. If you've been in the military, you know what I'm talking about. So from here and then pushing that back hand, almost like a chopping motion, just coming down. Notice that your arm isn't coming up from here. That's a weak strike. But from this position, using two hands, that's a very strong strike. Now pull it into your chest, step in and smash with this hard piece of oak, or you can have these made. My preference is hickory. So if you go to the Cane Master site, that link below, use this one and push in. Hank asked if I've ever worked with a tomahawk. Yes, Hank, I like to throw the tomahawk. And um, you know, when we were kids, we always had hatchets and tomahawks. And in fact, there are a couple uh, tomahawks and hatchets and longer axes that I have over here that are tools that also work very effectively for self-defense. Now, of course, you can't take it to the airplane, but you can do one of these. All right, so I missed that last one. Hank, I'll come back and take a look at it later. You're gonna bend the knees, bring this up in a thrust, answering your phone, but very quickly smashing, getting into the front hand, thrusting with two hands. Notice that you're advancing the whole time, taking small steps, moving someone back, Think about this hard piece 
smashing it through the nose, through the teeth, into the throat for self-defense. And then you can batter the sides, just boxing his ears with the sides of your cane from here. And then if you still have to, throw in a couple more of these. Now I wanna show you how that's similar to this second self-defense tool. Um, I missed that the question about, the, I think the first part, Hank's talking about change the rotation. Um, I, I think you're talking about throwing the, the, at, the hatchet or the ax and everything affects the rotation when you put weight on one side or the other. So from here, carrying it the same way, almost like a walking stick, you would have the top of your hand, and these are both about 36 inches. Most um, umbrellas like this, a golf umbrella, is going to be about 36 inches. From here, you do the same thing. You slide down, and then you come up with this first thrust. And the nice thing here is this is hard rubber, and so you have your hand grabbing against that rubber, but it's not just that it's hard. It also gives you a good grip. This hard part smashing into the nose, into the teeth. Now you don't have the crook obviously, but you're still gonna do damage with this first thrust. And notice again that you're turning through your shoulders and hips to get not just more reach, but more of a, a powerful strike. So you're getting more power in twisting the shoulders and hips. And if you're stepping, if you're advancing the whole time, again, closing that distance, you're gonna be hitting so much harder. From this position, again, coming up here and hitting, and in this case, uh, Lita, it's great to see you. Hank, it's always good to see you. Um, this case, this point, pointed end, this one is uh, plastic. Under this is a metal, so this is a plastic cap. There's metal under it. That's going to be hitting if you make contact really hard, and you can hear that it can move very fast because it's lightweight. As you bring it up into that front hand, thrusting like before, Coming forward, again, striking with this. Maybe you're also hitting part of your fist into his face for self-defense. And then turning, smashing with two hands, and boxing the ears. Now I'm gonna go back to the walking cane. The first self-defense tool, hidden self-defense tool you can take anywhere that could save your life. And in this case, I want you to see that before we were carrying it this way, now I'm gonna turn it around this way, more in the traditional way that you might carry a cane that has a crook. And this time, instead of sliding down the back with the knees bending, you're gonna slide down the front. So from here, one hand goes up between you and him, you and the threat, maybe it's multiple threats, put the hand between you and them, make sure your elbow's bent, your fingers are firm, you give a command back up, I'll defend myself, don't come any closer. From here, hand goes down, and then you bring it up into your front hand almost like this would be a sword you could strike with. But in this case, for uh, self-defense purposes and for practical effectiveness, I want you to get two hands on it because you're going to be stronger with two hands. And from here, as soon as you slide down and you bring it up, you're going to thrust. And again, you're pushing two arms coming forward and stepping at the same time. So you're going to be putting your entire body weight into that strike and you're aiming for that center center mass, center of his body, but this way and this way, right there in the solar plexus, right in that soft tissue, there's cartilage in there, the diaphragm's in there, you hit that hard enough, he's got all his air comes out, it's gonna hard, hard, be hard for him to breathe. Maybe if you need to defend yourself, it's life or death, that's a fatal strike going through the nose or the throat, crush that cartilage, it's over, or into the soft tissue of the face, into his teeth, into his lips, that right there, the bridge of the nose, or the uh, base of the nose there, there's all kinds of uh, nerve endings right there. If you've ever been punched there, you know what I'm talking about. Or smashing the nose, breaking it, the blood comes out, the eyes water, or here at the top of the nose, the bridge of the nose, that breaks away from the face very easily into the eyes. It's obvious there are many targets. Your question is what can you remove or destroy for self-defense? You slide down the front, bring it up here, step in with that thrust. Now that uh, phrase, what, that question, what can I remove or destroy? That comes from Tim Larkin's book, as we talk about when violence is the answer. I think it's the Bible for self-defense. I'm gonna put the link below. If it's not in there already, it'll be in the description. But if you haven't read it yet, go get that book, when violence is the answer. In this position, slide, lift, thrust, immediately turn. And you're gonna use two hands to smash in this way. 
Alita says, great from the garage. The sounds, the acoustics are kind of funky. I've never done this before in here. You can see we've got all the beach stuff back there. We live near the beach, we've got the bikes back there. But I really appreciate seeing you guys here and training with you. I've been missing you for a while. Um, yes, yeah, so that man says five inch door knocker. Absolutely. So smashing through here, again, you're boxing the sides of his ears. And then from here, I want you to bend the knees and then lift on the last thrust. And the purpose of bending your knees, again, is to load up the, the legs, load up those springs, so to speak, put them under tension, and then let go. And as you come up, thrusting with two hands, think about what that'll do when you hit him here, or you hit him here, you hit him here, and you're going lower and you're coming up at the same time. You're gonna create not just distance, but that could be a finishing strike. You're gonna be able to stop him and stop the fight quickly. And you know, one of the, the reasons I feel so compelled to do this video right now is I'm watching what's happening in the world. I gotta find a place to put these. But watching what's happening in the world and we're becoming more dangerous, <laughs> obviously. Becoming a more dangerous world very quickly all around the world between chaos, between stress that people are put under because of the finances and the economy and the cost of everything going up. But just then, you know, paying attention, the alarm bells should be going off everywhere. You see all these senseless acts of violence in cities where criminals are running muck and, and the, the laws not stopping them the way they used to because laws have been changed. Uh, police forces are overwhelmed, they've been defunded or they've been under attack so long that they're not. I, I talk to friends of mine who are in law enforcement and they say, we will not get out of the car unless there's something happening. We rarely, unless they call us, we're not gonna respond. We're not patrolling like we used to, looking for things to intervene in because we don't wanna, we don't wanna lose our jobs, we don't wanna go to jail because the, that's a real thing. So that's really happening and this is an area where we do still have the rule of law, but there are many places around the country and especially around the world where the rule of law is just breaking down. And then you add on top of that a lot of influx of people who are coming from other cultures who um, some of those people, I'm not saying all those people, but some of those people might be coming. We know they're pushing them out of their jails and they're sending them north. They're sending them around the world over here. And we see groups, active groups of violent criminals coming from other communities coming into your community, my community, and they are just, they're attacking everywhere. And so having some tools, if you're not able to carry one of these, I do this every day for my work, I carry something. And then I'm, I believe in ABC for me, always be carrying, I always have a concealed carry with me when I go places, especially with my family. But I also carry tools like this because this is not always the right answer. This might be the appropriate response. And this might be your only response. So I want you to have as many tools as you can. So going back to the techniques that we just did based on the Irish shillelagh, the Irish white walking stick, fighting stick, your hand slides down the front here, and then you bring it up very quickly into this position, into that front hand so that you get a stick between you and the threat. You put it right here, you ask yourself the question, what can I remember to destroy? You step in with that thrust, sticking the tip there through his nose, through his teeth, through his throat, in through the solar plexus, maybe down into the thin fascia, Maybe you're sitting in a chair. You can do all this from a sitting, seated position. Maybe you're in a wheelchair. Maybe you're waiting for the bus. Maybe you're on the train. You have your umbrella, pop it up, thrust. From this position, step into a two-handed thrust, vert or horizontally, smashing through the teeth, through the nose, into the chest, and then pushing from side to side to knock him back, striking, bend the knees, and finish off with that thrust. So bend. And come in here. You can also bring it up down here. If you need it to. You could put some pressure here. Release, adding power to that strike. You can use it as you would use a sword for self-defense. It's just a very simple hidden self-defense tool that you can take anywhere with you, or take with you anywhere that might save your life. So we went over. We started with the self-defense uh, walking stick, which is just basically a walking cane with a crook on it and you can use this. I only showed you a couple things. You might have it, and again, you might need one to stand up. This is a big complaint. People tell me all the time, that's not uh, realistic. I need my walking cane, or if I, if I lift it up, I'm gonna fall down. So lean on one, you can bring this one up, just by twisting or turning your hand, bending the elbow, and then lifting the shoulder, you can create a lot of force coming up very quickly, and then if you have this kind of a walking stick, 
you can bring it down on top of his head because you have, and this works with both the derby style, which is the straight, it's not the crook, it's not rounded, it's just a straight kind. You can snap it up, turn your hand, and bring it down. And it's literally this motion, thumbs up like you're hitching a ride, turn your hand over, and palm down like you're slapping your money on the table. Boom, just like that. So from here, snatch him up, and then bring it down. Maybe this one comes between his legs, or hits him under the chin, and then this one, comes down over the top of his head. You could also, from this position, bring it across this way, bring it here, bring it back. You can hear that it generates a lot of force when you hit him with this hard self-defense cane. Again, that's the first link below. And you can see, have it made like this. This is an inch oak. Get it in seven eighths inch hickory. That's my preference. It's a little bit thinner diameter. It's easier to handle. And it hits so much harder because hickory's hard, hickory's heavy. And hickory doesn't break very easily. This won't either, but hickory is going to be a little bit superior. It's going to cost you an extra couple bucks. But neither one of these, if you buy these two the way they are right now, both of them are less than 50 bucks. And, it, and I put a link below to the Uzi umbrella that they have on. This is not the Uzi. I've seen, I've worked with the Uzi, but I left it in Ohio, left mine in Ohio. And this is just a golf umbrella. That's a, like a commercial umbrella that we use where I work keep people dry when it's raining because it's raining all the time, especially now. Um, but they're indestructible. I mean, I've hit this thing, smashed this against so many things. Then the Uzi umbrella is made even better than this one. Both of them less than 50 bucks, the links below. But these are hidden self-defense tools you can take with you anywhere and everywhere. No one's gonna ask you to um, show you your, your medical card from the doctor to prove it. That's your personal uh, medical privacy. You don't have to share that anyway. And the Americans with Disabilities Act in the United States allows you to carry this everywhere. Common sense allows you to carry an umbrella because it's an umbrella. It's not, you know, it's, the, it's probably the least likely self-defense tool, even though if you think for even a second about it, this is just a big stick with a pointy end and a really hard handle. So it's, it's an act, act, absolutely uh, perfect self-defense tool. And again, extremely strong. You're not going to break it. Um, but get one of these. Most, more importantly, learn how to defend yourself with these. I use a 36-inch dowel rod that I've sanded and oiled from Home Depot where I get them at Lowe's because they're running out all the time, which is why I had a hard time getting sticks out. They keep running out of stock. But um, you train with a stick and then all around you are sticks. It might not be an umbrella. It might not be a walking cane. But there are other sticks everywhere you go. There aren't shorter sticks, like when you're uh, cleaning your windshield at the gas station. There are shorter sticks, like uh, I've got a spatula for the grill. It's about this long. We were just at the restaurant. They had sticks everywhere. All over this restaurant, I'm looking around. I find self-defense tools. Make that your practice. If you go into a restaurant, if you go into a store, if you go into a public place, a library, look around and think about what could you pick up and throw for self-defense. What could you pick up and smash with for self-defense? How can you leverage what you have naturally? What do you have as a force multiplier in your environment that will allow you to stay safe or protect your family? And then when you start to see things and think about things like that, your confidence grows a little bit and you realize that you don't have to be a victim. You can prepare so you don't have to perish. You don't have to panic when something does happen. Because maybe nothing will happen. Maybe the storm that we're in just blows by like some of the storms do down here in South Florida, but maybe it's a category five hurricane and it's just slowly coming and it's going to smash everything in its past path and you better get some water and you better get a lighting source and you better get some food for about 20, 30 days and not wait for FEMA to come and try to save you because you're going to have to take care of yourself until someone gets there to save you. And maybe these self-defense tools that you can get anywhere for inexpensive and carry with you anywhere. And you can learn how, you can train with these videos. I've got hundreds and hundreds of videos on this channel about how to fight with walking sticks and canes. And every one of those videos applies to the umbrella. So put in the comment section below what your favorite stick self-defense tool is. And whether it's a walking stick made out of wood or a cane, like a cane master's cane, or an umbrella or anything else that you can think of. We, we, this is a community, we all learn from each other. When you guys put those comments in the comment section and then comment on each other's comments, that helps grow this channel and it helps our knowledge base grow. 
And I learn things from you as much as you learn from me, or probably I learn more from you than you do from me. You can see my, my tape fell down. I learned this trick when I made a, a commercial for Facebook years ago. They came and did a commercial before they got into all that trouble. And uh, they put gaffer's tape all over <laughs> my logos everywhere. And since I don't want to represent, I'm not misrepresent the other place where I work, which has nothing to do with self-defense. Although that's my job there is to protect everybody. Um, anyway, so I taped it up. So if you were wondering why you can see little pieces of tape and then you saw, I'll show you that one. Oh, Hank asked how my hips are. I was supposed to have this one replaced. I'm finally, I'm done with the pain. I've done everything I can. I went back to the doctor. They did an x-ray. It's three, four times worse. It's in stage arthritis. It's like either do it now or it's gonna break and we'll, you'll have to do it. So I was gonna do it last week. They pushed it back. It was gonna be next week. They pushed it back. Now it's not till March. I was planning on setting up the new uh, training uh, uh, studio so we can continue to do these. As soon as I got my hips done, I thought I'd be done by now. But I'm gonna do this one in March and then the other one in May. And then they say I can, I can kick above my head again and do all the crazy stuff I used to do. Although I don't think I'm going back in that direction. I think I wanna go more in this direction and teach you and work with you and learn from you more self-defense. All right, yeah, um, ex-NYC uh, Prepper said he did it and he's kicking again. I've seen a lot of your videos. I see how you move, you move really well. So I appreciate that. Um, lead us his best wishes and Hanks is probably, I missed that other part, Hank, but I appreciate uh, you guys asking for me or asking about it. And I appreciate your patience as we get going. I'm gonna try to do a bunch of these before, um, I'm supposed to be able to move really well within a couple weeks. So I should be doing them from now until then anyway. Um, yeah, I think the question was, is it okay to learn how to fight like Morgan from The Walking Dead? If you watch The Walking Dead, the, the first seasons where, not, not the newer ones, but the ones where they first introduced this character and he goes into the woods. I've never seen a full episode. I've only seen uh, clips. But I saw the one where he's with the large, balding gentleman who's a character actor from other shows and he teaches him Aikido. And the funny thing is, what he's doing has nothing to do with how you would use an Aikido uh, staff, a Joe, which would be the Joe. Aikido, Aikido uses both the bow and the Joe, the 72 inch staff and the 54 inch staff. However, when he gets the action scenes and he's sticking that thing through the eye of the, you know, the Walking Dead, they're coming, he's smashing the heads and he's sticking it through all that stuff. That stuff's pretty realistic. Not that it's realistic that they have the zombies and everything else, but you know the zombies are a metaphor for society breakdown, right? Zombies are the unprepared people coming after your prepping uh, stuff, the stuff that you put aside, protect your family, and they get the ones who are not prepared the first, and the ones who are prepared are the ones that last the longest. So the zombies have always been just a metaphor for pre preparation for when the stuff hits the fan. Um, which is why I like movies like that or shows like that. Anyway, my point is that if you watch Morgan from The Walking Dead, he's doing very practical, basic stuff. He's thrusting with one hand. He's smashing here. He's hitting here. He's coming back over here. He's pushing here. He's, uh, you know, lifting this here. He's not, he's not doing the, you know, cool, fun spin stuff that I like to do also, but I would never do for self-defense. He's doing uh, you know, the old uh, Marine Corps rifle butt smash and uh, two-handed bayonet thrust, you know, hook and jab. And that stuff works. Um, and it works for self-defense because it's just simple fighting. When it comes to fighting, you gotta simplify it, right? Boxers do four punches, that's it. And then they do a variation of those four punches. And then they do the jab 90% of the time. And the hook and the uppercut, those things all come um, in the right-hand cross which is really just another jab. Those things all come after he's done about 90,000 punch jabs to wear the other guy down and find his distance. And then he throws boom, these other hooks and stuff, but it keeps it simple. And the best grapplers, if you look at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, if you look at Western wrestling, if you look at uh, old style Judo, the best uh, grapplers, they focus on the basics. So I want you to focus on the basics and don't get tricked by fancy, stuff. Do, do the fancy spinning because it's enjoyable and you can improve your health from it and you can learn how to have better timing and distance and it's all fun stuff, but keep it simple. Simple works 
basic works, practical works, and it's when you get into the real fancy, you know, you're gonna grab a guy and twist him and bring him behind his back and throw him over there. And, you know, you're 76 years old and you need a hip replacement still, and you're hurting, your knees hurt, and you don't move like you used to, and you're trying to do, you know, seven or eight different moves, you're in trouble. But if you're that same person, and you have the same infir infirmities and the same limitations, and you just come straight forward, you bring it through here, and you do two hands and you smash here, and I've been seeing these videos, a lot of videos lately, these guys, 60, 70, 80, 90 years old, straight punches, and they knock the guy off because the guys are mostly cowards anyway, and it works. So keep it simple, focus on what you have. Don't try to overcomplicate it. Learn that stuff, but learn that for the aesthetics of it. Learn it because it's you know the esoteric, the interesting parts of it. Learn the theories and the philosophies and all that. But then when it comes down to the basics, you know, hit them with, a punch or better yet a palm strike or an elbow or a knee or a headbutt for self-defense or leverage what you've got pick yourself up a self-defense walking cane like that first link below for less than 50 bucks and hit them with this because this is going to uh, multiply your force by a factor of whatever by a lot right especially if you don't have the same range of motion you used to you don't have to swing it all over you keep it in the middle and you just jab little jabs and you keep them back and you step into it every time and you push and push and you don't have to have you know shoulders that do what they used to do they might only be able to do this now and you can still defend yourself don't let anybody convince you that you can't they're lying to you they don't know i don't know you don't know only god knows and leave it there and you'll uh, yeah alexander says he keeps a hammer with him that's a force multiplier right there you can't take it on a plane but uh, last time I was flying, a guy came through, he had his whole bag of tools. He was going to a job. He had power tools. He had beautiful hammers because he opened it up and they're looking at him like, you know, where have you been? You can't fly with any of this stuff. And he had to throw it away. It was bizarre. Or he'll give it to the TSA and go get on his flight because he couldn't afford to miss his flight. I also saw a gentleman carry a beautiful, and when it was a cane, it was a cane master's cane. He carried this up to the TSA. They took his cane master's cane away, put it on the conveyor belt, sent it through, gave him a cheap TSA cane. He walked through the um, metal detector, you know, because they don't even make you do this and zap you anymore. He just walks through because he was uh, 100 years old. On the other side, they handed him back his cane master's cane, and he went and got on his flight. So I've seen it over and over again. You can take this anywhere you go. Anyway, you guys have been awesome. Thanks again for being here. I miss you guys, and I will hopefully see you in a couple days. Thank you.